Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton Hillers Playoff Baseball. It is the South Division II semifinals. It is the ninth seeded Hopkinton Hillers against fifth seeded Greater New Bedford. The Hillers are 14 and eight on the season, while Greater New Bedford is 16 and six. And we are underway, the windup and the pitch is ball one, a one and O oh count to start this game off. And it is a beautiful stadium here in Rockland, Massachusetts, a neutral site game. That pitch ball two at the plate. It is Ben McKenzie, the sophomore for the Hillers. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for what should be a great game between two very good teams. We get Stevie Simos on deck. And there's ball three. Ben McKenzie having a great season at the plate. Sophomore waits the pitch. There's a strike. And we're trying to track down the uh, Greater New Bedford roster. They apparently came to a playoff game, a semifinals game without a roster. So good preparation on their part. And there's a, another strike that'll fill up the count. Three and two on McKenzie. as this is hit in the air over to right field and caught. And that is the first out of the game. And that'll bring up now Steve Simos. 13, designated hitter, Steven Simos. Little accent on Simos's last name, Simos. But he had a key hit by pitch yesterday. Nothing new. Yeah, they try. Ball one. That one low, two and oh on Simos. Do we have any stats on this new Bedford pitcher? We don't have anything right now, Larry. Ah, uh, goodness gracious. We got here a little bit late. Traffic was bad. We're, we're just getting set up and getting everything ready to go. We'll just call him the kid, okay? Grounds by, over the over pitcher. Over the pitcher and a one to three, two away. Alex Reynolds will step in. Now batting number two, the catcher. Alex Reynolds. Greater New Bedford Regional High School. They defeated Milford in their last game. And there's a ball. They're Steve made Reynolds. up of. They're made up of Fairhaven, New Bedford, and Dartmouth, Massachusetts. is a regional vocational school. And this is up the middle to the shortstop, and that is a six to three, and that'll wrap up the top half of the first. A scoreless top of the first. Score Greater New Bedford eight. coming up next on HK. Two, center fielder, James Estrella. Bottom of the first, James Estrella coming up for the Bears of Greater New Bedford Regional. As he will step in, and he is set to face Brendan Kelly, who is on the mound. For the Hopkinton Hillers, we'll go around the diamond in just a moment. That one is just high. Brendan Kelly on the mound, Alex Reynolds behind home plate as the catcher. Jake LeBlanc at first. Over at second, it's Dawson McMillan. As this one's up the middle, left side, gloved by the shortstop, Ben McKenzie. Throw to first, and they got him. Six to three goes Estrella. 
So Ben McKenzie at short, Dylan O'Leary at third from left to right, Zach Sosicki, Ryan Wolf, and Brett McIntyre for the Hopkinton Hillers. Now stepping in is number 21, Noah Rivera, the third baseman. Wind up and the pitch. That one is fouled away. We did finally manage to uh, <laughs> track down the Greater New Bedford roster. Let that be a lesson, folks. If you're coming to one of these games, don't bank that they're going to have rosters, even if it's a semifinals playoff game, as that one's upstairs. 2 0. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle it goes, left side, that'll get through the reach of O'Leary, and that's going to be a one-out single for Rivera. This field is a beautiful stadium, 320 to right field, 403 to center, 390 to left. A gorgeous field here at Rockland First High School. Tyler Aruda. They certainly have some nice facilities to play on, to say the least. That was a tough hop for Dylan. Uh, he could have short hopped it or waited for the long hop with a back step, but decided to wait on it, and the ball ate him up a little. Tyler Arruda at the plate. There's a strike, one and one. Tom, uh, Brandon Kelly is showing a lot of poise for a sophomore. Two and one now. Brandon Kelly's had a pretty good season on the mound as a sophomore. Two wins, two losses, a 3.00 ERA. As that one's fouled away. Seven appearances on the mound. Opponent's batting average only had a 2.28. I went upstairs, three and two. He's your prototypical power pitcher. It's good size, 6'2", 215. That one just low, Aruda draws the walk. It's two on, one out now. Now batting number 12, the shortstop. Andrew Matos. And they'll bring up Andrew Matos, the shortstop. You can count on Alex Reynolds to manage this game. The young sophomore out in the mound. He may take more visits than he normally does. The bunt up the middle, slow roller, and Kelly falls. Everyone's safe. A little bit of a... Slip there, and Matos beats it out. Bases loaded, one out. And you wonder if that's from all the rain that we've gotten lately. Maybe the surface a little bit slippery. Now batting number 16, the designated hitter. The DH Jared coming up Mathia. now. Jared Mathia to step in. I'm not sure whether they're playing a double play depth. It looks like they're playing back. They're going to test. Up the middle, up and through the middle it goes. One run is in, a second run is in, and the throw in is too late. 2 nothing. Greater New Bedford. Noah Rivera and Taylor Aruda both score. And it is a two RBI single for the DH, Jared Mathia. Now batting number 24, the catcher. Kevin Santiago. And now the catcher, Kevin Santiago, will step in. And there's a strike. Kelly set to deal, the bunt up the mid, up the left side it goes rather. Fielded by the third baseman, throw across in time. Just got him, a good play by O'Leary, but both runners on base do push up. 
Matos up to third and Mathia up to second. Now batting number 19, the right fielder, Andrew Vinagre. The right fielder will step in, Andrew Vinagre. We'll have time called here. Who called time, the batter? I believe so. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Nice curveball by Brendan. I think he was expecting the number one, and he threw the yak. Runners on second and third, still only one out, two runs already in. There's a strike. Oh, and two the count. Inside. Two outs in the inning, excuse me. Set to deliver. Just outside. Fans didn't like that call. At least on our side of the fence here. Up the middle it goes. Gloved by the shortstop. The throw to first is going to be in time. Nice job by McKenzie getting it over off the hop. And a great job by LeBlanc pulling it up off the Score dirt for the six to three, Bedford but Greater New Bedford two plates two runs, and it is two nothing as we head to the second inning. The first baseman, Jake LeBlanc. Top of the second inning, Jake LeBlanc, the cleanup hitter and first baseman to start things off. Set to deal is the pitcher, Tyler Horton. And this one is hit in the air, a high fly ball over to the left side. Left fielder ranging over, makes the catch, one away. Made the catch in foul territory. Now batting number nine, the second baseman, Dawson McMillan. Dawson McMillan to step in. I thought the Hillers might Make this kid throw some pitches, not be quite so anxious at the plate. Swinging strike. Well, a rough start to the game for the Hillers, but still plenty of time to go. On deck is Zach Sasitsky. Hit in the air over to left field, ranging over and making the catch. For the second out is the left fielder, and he is staying busy out there this inning. Sosinski had a big double fielder. in yesterday's game Matt down the left field Sosinski. line against the Falmouth Clippers. Cameron Massa, the left fielder for Greater New Bedford. Now one outside, 1-0. Zach, not a dead pull hitter, but if he were to be, it's only 320 down the right field line and 390 to left field. Up the middle it goes, and uh, second baseman trying the backhand, bobbled it, but is able to get a hold of it, but the throw not in time. So Sasitsky beats it out. I'm going to score that one a single. I think that was a good piece of hitting. Yeah, he did, did a good job knocking that ball down. Now batting number eight, the right fielder, Brett McIntyre. Brett McIntyre to step in, the right fielder. On the season, a 167 batting average. He's driven in four, uh, driven in five, scored four. And he will put this up the third base side, gloved by the third baseman, the throw over, not a problem. 
And that'll be the third and final out of the top half of the second. To the bottom of the second we go. Greater New Bedford leading 2-0 on HKM. Bedford. Bottom of the second inning. Greater New Bedford back up to the plate. Starting things off is the eighth hitter in their now lineup, Corey Vieira. Number 13, the second baseman, Corey Vieira. He is the second baseman for Greater New Bedford. Good offensive team are the Beavers. That one fouled away, 0-1. That to deliver, just outside, one and one. The Hillers made it easy for the New Bedford pitcher. Threw just seven pitches that inning. That one has popped up foul. Set to deal, just low. A split stadium here, the Hopkins fans didn't like that call and the greater New Bedford fans love that call. Got three umpires today. And there's a strike, gets the K, one away. That'll bring up the next hitter for the Beavers. And now that's the left fielder, the Cameron left fielder, Massa. Cameron Massa. There's a difference between Bears and Beavers, is there not, Tom? There's a strike. Well, I got one piece of paper that says Beavers, the other one's saying Bears, so they can't really get their team name right either, I guess. <laughs> that one low. The umpire was... Uh, Alex asked for the call, the first base umpire, and he called him strike. Didn't like that one, but Owen, or uh, did like that one rather for the Hillers, as that one's followed away, Owen two. Be nice for Brendan to have a quick inning here. Get his guys in the dugout. And there's strike three, two straight strikeouts for Kelly. And we'll bring up the leadoff hitter, James Estrella. Now batting number two, the center fielder, James Estrella. Center fielder for Greater New Bedford. That one's fouled away. Low, one and one. I like to, his pitch ratio is to uh, sliders, fastballs. As this is chopped up the left side, foul. One and two. In case you haven't noticed, I'm working, I'm multitasking once again today, working the camera as well. So uh, there'll be a lot of zoomed out shots today. <laughs> That one upstairs, two and two. Brennan put a little more umph on that pitch. Just low, full count. A tough pitch to take, two strikes. Upstairs draws the walk. Bring up Noah Rivera, the third baseman. Now batting number 21, the third baseman, Noah Rivera. Full lineup for Greater New Bedford. James Estrella, the center fielder, was the leadoff hitter. Noah Rivera, third baseman. Tyler Arruda, the first baseman, batting third. Shortstop Andrew Matos, as that one is in there for a strike. DH, Jared Mathia, catcher Kevin Santiago, batting sixth. 
Andrew Vinagre, the right fielder, batting seventh. Corey Vieira, the second baseman, batting eighth. And Cameron Mass, the left fielder, rounding out the batting order. One on, two outs, and that one just low on the breaking pitch. Outside, two and one. Hit in the air over to right field towards the wall and ranging back to make the catch is McIntyre and that will retire the side. On the bottom of the second to the third we go, two nothing, Greater New Bedford leading Hopkinton. Top half of the third the inning. Pitcher Brendan Kelly to step in for the Hillers. Eighth in the batting order, eight, nine and one due up. Kelly, O'Leary, and McKenzie. Should Brendan make it on, I'm sure he'll be pinch run for. Save his energy for pitching. The 1 0 pitch. Just low. Coach Simos looking on intently. I don't know what he told his hitters in between innings, whether to take some pitches, not be quite so anxious. That one low. Three and oh on Kelly. There's a strike. You may recall in the Ashland game, Brendan hit a prodigious home run about 360 feet to center field, down a field two in Hopkinton, so he does have power. Swing strike there, and the count's full. Showing off some of that power there, trying to whack that one. Up the middle it goes, past the reach of the second baseman, and it's a leadoff base hit for Kelly. Brendan helping himself out there with a single. Will Coach Simos go to his bench for a pinch runner on a re-entry? Now batting number one, the center fielder, Ryan Wolf. Ryan Wolf to step in. the center fielder. From the stretch is Horton. Bunt, and it's up the third base side. That's a fair ball, everybody's safe. They called him out, Tom, for a bunting. He got hit by his own bunt. Oh, wow. So it's Brendan Kelly's right got to return to first base, a dead ball. We saw that in the girls' softball game against Dartmouth on Saturday. I guess you could call that one a bunt out. Yep. Ben call it whatever you want. <laughs> now batting number 12, the shortstop, Ben McKenzie. When McKenzie steps in, the shortstop. Both team has runners, but nobody's picked over as yet. Runner leading off of first. That's hit in the air, a high fly ball over to right center. And ranging over to make the catch is the right fielder, Andrew Vinagre. Runner will stay put at first, one away. Two away, actually. Now batting number 13, the designated hitter, Steven Samos. There's Samos to the plate. Be a nice time for Stevie to clock one out of the ballpark. 
And, there's a and he hits this one over to right center field, and that's going to drop in a deep center field. Coming around second and around third is the first Hiller's run. It is an RBI double for Simos, and he's showing off that power there, two to one. Brendan Kelly looked gasped by the time he hit home plate. The big man. Yeah, came all the way from first base. Here's Steven Simos getting now a piece of that one. Catcher, Good piece of hitting there. This is the guy you want to have up in this situation, Tom. The Tri-Valley MVP. Here comes Alex Reynolds. He looks like they intentionally passed him. Well, they did. They'll give him the free pass. Playing a little strategy here. Now batting number 14, the first baseman, Jake LeBlanc. Here comes Jake LeBlanc to the plate. So the deficit's been cut in half in the top of the third. It's ball one. Let's recap the roads to get to this game for both of these teams. We'll start off with Greater New Bedford. They came in as the fifth seed, 14 and six regular season. They beat Bishop Fian. In the first round, it was the 12th seed, and then they beat Milford in the second round, it was the 13th seed. They beat Greater New Bedford 13 to four, Milford two to one. There's a strike. One and one now the count. As for the Hillers, they came into the tournament as the ninth seed. They had to play a road game to start things off at Plymouth North. They got the three to one win there and a great pitching performance by Chris Burdick. That one is low. The catcher kept it in front of him, but Simos takes off anyway, and he is safe at third. Runners on the corners now with two outs. Sacrifice fly here will not work. He's got to get the ball through or on the ground in the outfield. Reynolds not a threat to steal. I'm not sure what Coach Simos is thinking. So after uh, Plymouth North getting a nice road victory, the Hillers took on Falmouth just yesterday. Larry, you had the call of that game. A great, I did. Great performance uh, by the Hillers and by Burdick once again as that one is hit in the air, right side. The first baseman tracking it down and he will not catch up to it, but it is foul. Two and two. Ended up being a 5-2 win for the Hillers over Falmouth. All five runs scored in the third inning in that game. And they advanced to the semifinals right I th here. I thought uh, Coach Simos might put on the play that Plymouth North tried on Hopkinton. It's sending the runner from first, try and stay in a pickle, and have the man on third, in this case Stevie Simos, shuffle his way down the line and grab home plate. Time called as the... Hitter, Jake LeBlanc, straightening out and is ready to step back in there and try to knock in some more Hiller's runs. Hopkinton already with a run across. The Bedford pitcher doesn't seem to show a lot of experience right now, the way he's holding the ball so loosely. Of course, if he drops the ball, it's a bonk. There's a bunt, first base side, fair ball, run across, but the throw's in time, run will not count. And that will wrap up the third inning, the top of the third, but not before the Hillers do play to run. It is two to one heading Score to the bottom of the inning. Half, Greater New Bedford two, Hopkinton one. First baseman, Tyler Arruda. Bottom of the third inning, two to one, Greater New Bedford leading the Hopkinton Hillers. Tyler Arruda steps back in. First baseman, Brennan Kelly delivers. That one just low, 1-0. Oh. Stevie Simos just ran down the bullpen to catch Tommy Leone who was warming up down there. That is hit in the air, liner to short, and no problem by McKenzie, one away. Now batting number 12, the shortstop. Andrew Matos. Andrew Matos to come up. He singled his only time up and is in the first inning. 
That one low, 1-0. Oh. Three umpires today, so shouldn't be too much contention on calls. That one upstairs. And this one is up the left side. Glove by the third baseman. Throw to first, not a problem. Five to three goes Maddows, two away. Nice play by Dylan O'Leary. Nice transfer. Now batting number 16, the designated bring up Jared Mathia, the DH. Mathia. He hit the two RBI single in the first inning, which scored Noah Rivera and Tyler Arruda. And at the time gave the Bears of Greater New Bedford a 2-0 lead, which has since been cut down. It's 2-1. That is hit in the air, foul out of play. This young man probably plays football. He certainly looks like he does. Line up and the pitch. That one is up the first base side, glove by the pitcher, throw to first, not a problem. One, two, three, they go. In the third, to the fourth we go. It is 2-1, Greater New Bedford leading the, the Hopkinton Hillers. Complete. The Bears two, the Hillers one. Top of the fourth now inning, a 2-1 ball game. Nine, the second baseman, Stepping in is Dawson the second McMillan. baseman, Dawson McMillan. The Hillers trying to get some momentum in their favor. They got a little bit last inning, and they're going to try to get more this inning. Dawson, a good push bunter, better than a drag bunter. Takes a strike. Third baseman playing back. I'm sure he's noticed that already. Leg lift and the pitch. It's a ball, one and one. Up the first base side, bobbled by the first baseman, recovers, flips to the pitcher, and that is a good defensive play. They get the out. Had a little bit of trouble, nicely covered by the pitcher, and they get him. They'll bring up Zach Sosicki. And Larry, I don't normally give the other team a lot of credit, but that was a pretty good play. Absolutely. And pitcher knew that the ball was to the right side, and he got over there right away and took a good angle to get to the base. So I will give him credit for that, but not much else today. There's a strike. That's a nice break-in pitch. Zach has been swinging a hot bat lately. Takes one inside there. One and one. Swing strike. I think that's the hardest ball the pitcher's thrown yet today. And that is hit in the air, left side, foul into the stands. And there are some. Uh, Nice stance here. We'll give you a quick little uh, look around. There's Larry. Larry's done a nice job all season long on color and got a uh, one game on play-by-play. -play. And you did a nice job, Larry, must say. Thank you very much, Thomas. Add an extra zero to my paycheck, please. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that. All right, we'll talk about it. If you get me a hot dog, I'll waive my paycheck. That might be doable. That's more in our budget. <laughs> Uh, except I don't smell any hot dogs. Which is surprising. A venue like this, you'd think they would have them. 
Well, the MIA has gone all out, adding an extra umpire. Right. They've, over, they've overspent what they could afford. <laughs> Three and two on Sasitsky. Adding an extra umpire might throw them in Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I don't know. I will say, though, the trip to Rockland, not really a nice trip, but the stadium is worth it. That one's low. There's a walk. One out walk to Sasitsky, and now Brett McIntyre, the right fielder, will step in. And Sasitsky, he's come a long way with the bat lately. 280 batting average. And he's also uh, drawn his fair share of walks as well. As McIntyre steps in. Brett is an excellent bunner, excellent suicide squeeze guy. Third baseman is playing in. 321 on base percentage for Sasitsky. That one low. And for McIntyre, 205 on the season. Not really known for his bat, but at times can get a nice hit. Seven runs scored, seven driven in. Does have a 314 on base percentage. From the stretch is Horton. And this is hit. Up the right side, a little bloop shot, and it's handled by the second baseman, two-way. That ball was in on the hands on Brett. He could go track down any fly ball. He'd be on my all-defensive team any day. And Kelly steps in. Kelly got the uh, single in the third and scored the only Hillers run. Two out hit, and scored Simos. As this is up the right side, nearly hits the runner, but glove by the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. Four to three goes Kelly, and that will wrap up the top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. It's 2-1, Greater New Bedford leading Hopkinton on HCAM. Score after three and a half, Greater New Bedford two, Hopkinton one. Bottom of the fourth inning. Greater New Bedford coming back up to the plate. Six, seven, and eight do up. Kevin Santiago to start things off. The catcher, Andrew Vinagre, the right fielder, followed by Corey Vieira, the second baseman. Got a little hold here. Uh, Jake LeBlanc needed a little equipment work with his glove. Leading off a Greater New Bedford. So far today, catcher, Santiago's Kevin grounded Santiago. out. He steps in. That's fouled away. And we'll certainly uh, try to keep you updated as well on the Hillers softball game that's happening in Taunton. That game just getting started up, a 5 p.m. start, but with the way softball goes sometimes, could be over uh, pretty quickly as this one's hit up the left side, throw across, five to three goes Santiago. Nice play by O'Leary, and that'll bring up Benagre. Dylan's been playing flawless third base the last four or five games. Now batting number 19, the right fielder, Andrew Vanagre. Our friends at Milford TV are gonna, were kind enough to uh, share their footage with us of the Milford softball game, so we'll have highlights of that game available as well. That one inside, 1-0. One and, and hopefully there'll be good Hillers highlights, just like this one. Kelly deals. Outside, 2-0. Oh. That pitch looked good to me. The umpire just disagrees. Swing strike. Nice weather for this evening's game. 68 degrees, partly cloudy here in Rockland, Massachusetts. As that one is popped up, that is in fair territory and handled by Kelly. Piece of cake for Brendan Kelly. Alex Reynolds was pointing up, but normally his ball. But Brendan Kelly called him off. Now batting number 13. Yeah, nice job. Second baseman. We're at Veterans Vieira. Memorial Stadium, I might add. Right next to Rockland High School. 
As stepping in is Corey Vieira, the second baseman. Up the middle it goes. Left side, glove by sh the shortstop, throw to first. They got him. Another pick by Jake LeBlanc. And he is getting really good at those. He struggled early on in the season picking those up, but he, he has been flawless as of late. And he gets the out there. After four innings, it is Greater New Bedford 2, Hopkinton 1 on HCAM. Top of the fifth inning, 9 1 and 2 due up for the Hillers. Ryan Wolf to start things off. Ben McKenzie, the shortstop. Steve Simos, the DH. Off for Ryan Wolf will step in. Fielder, and he's Wolf. really stepped up his game offensively lately. 281 overall on the season. He's played in all 21 games. Or 21 out of the 22, actually. Six runs scored, three RBIs. Plays his normally flawless center field. So that one's low, 1 0. 361 on base percentage. Third baseman creeping in a little bit, thinking that maybe the nine hitter might lay down a bunt. Gets a piece of this one over to right field, but under it to make the catch is Andrew Vinagre. One away, Ben McKenzie to the plate. I don't think the Hillers have had a leadoff man on in the game. You can correct me if I'm wrong. They have not. Kenzie 0 for 2 so far today. Did you notice how we scooted in here without paying the admission fee? Oh, we don't have to pay that. We're well. media. <laughs> I got the contract in my <laughs> hand. That one outside, 1-0. Ben McKenzie, a sophomore, a 413 batting average on the season. Second on the team behind Alex Reynolds. And plenty of swipe bags. He's played in every single game this season. 28 runs scored, 18 driven in. That one low, 2 and 0. Oh. I think Steve Simos is thinking about scratching out a run here, so if Ben can get on, he might let him loose, although the Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School catcher. That's a mouthful. Looks like he's got a pretty good gun on him. There's a strike. Let's just call him GNB. Okay. Greater New Bedford. <laughs> Ball in the dirt. Three and one. Had to get a selfie here. <laughs> Keep that off air. I, you and I have the faces for radio. Well, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> that one low. And the walk is drawn. One out walk. That's the second time that's happened in a row. One out walk. And now Steve Simos to the plate. Steven he had an RBI Simos. double in the third, which scored Brendan Kelly for the Hillers' only run of the game. And we're going to get a little chat on the mound as the coach for the Bears will come out and talk to his pitcher, who seems to be having a few control issues. And we'll just settle him down. Overall, has not thrown a whole lot of pitches. Unlike uh, the Falma starting yesterday. Oh, he's going to take the ball. That's a surprise. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I did not expect him to pull him out that early. But he knows he's playing this like a one-loss elimination game. He's not taking any risks, so he's going to take the ball from him. Big surprise there. I mean, it's the fifth inning, but this game moving at a good pace. None of the pitchers have really thrown a whole lot of pitches, but he doesn't want to take any risks. So we'll have a new pitcher for the Bears. We'll get you an update on who that is when we return on HKM. Continuing on with the top half of the fifth inning, a new pitcher for the Greater New Bedford Bears. Tyler Aruda moves over from first base and takes over on the mound. Jared Mathia, who was the DH, is now the first baseman. So the Bears lose their DH for the rest of the game. As Steve Simo steps in. Runner on first, one out. 
He doubled his last time up over the center fielder's head. I thought he would have got three out of it, but he held up. He drove in pitcher Brennan Kelly. Yep, drove in the only run so far for the Hillers, hoping to do some more damage here. And he will get a piece of this one. It is popped up left side and dropped in foul territory. I'll make the count 0-2. Reasonable effort by the third baseman. I won't say great, just reasonable. Well, you don't get to this point in the postseason and not have a solid defense with some good pitchers and some good bats. You gotta be a good all-around team to make it to these semifinals. Alex Reynolds on deck. He's gonna hit. And Simos gets a piece of this one, rips it up the right side, but foul. Just a reminder, Ashland Legion Baseball is returning on HCAM this summer. I'll be on the call, Larry might join me. Should be a lot of fun, some great talent coming from Ashland and Hopkinton this season, as well as maybe Hollison and Bellingham. Haven't seen the roster yet, but with these towns loaded with talent, I'll be surprised if it's not a very good team this year. That one is low, one and two. Nice take by Stevie. Got a very good eye for getting hit by pitches. A very good eye when he's not hit by one. Runner leading off of first, taking off for second to throw up the pipe, and he is going to be out. Caught stealing. Great throw from behind the plate by Santiago. And he gets the out. And that will wrap up the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. With the score, Greater New Bedford two, Hopkinton one. Uh, Bottom of the fifth inning. Two to one score between the Hillers and Greater New Bedford. As the last sequence in the top of the inning ended up pretty much being a double play. Is that pitch a little bit wild? 1 0. It was the relief pitcher, Tyler Ruda, struck out Simos, and then McKenzie took off from first and was caught stealing. Here's another wild pitch, 2-0. And, oh. and now Reynolds will have a little chat with Kelly. And so will Matt Anderson, Matt he's Anderson pitching now. coach. Try to get him uh, under control a little bit. Struggling to start off this inning. And you wonder what the leash will be, this being a one-loss elimination playoff and of course you're trailing by one you can't afford really to give up too many more runs especially with what the Bears have shown they have available for pitching. Tommy Leone back out in the bullpen heating up with catcher Stevie Simos. Whatever Alex Reynolds told Brenda Kelly he poured that ball in for a strike. A one count on Massa, so that one's fouled away. One and one, or excuse me, 0 and two. Two, two pitch. That one low, that'll fill up the count. So start off with two wild ones, pair of strikes, another ball, let's see what he does here. Fouled away, the battle continues between the left fielder Cameron Massa and Brennan Kelly. He's the number nine hitter, Tom, Masson. Nine, one, and two this inning for the Bears. Same as what the Hillers had in the top of the fifth, nine, one, and two. Fouled away, count remains full. Brennan got away with that pitch. That would have been ball four. No warm-up action for the Hillers. 
That one is hit foul out of play, or is it out of play? The chase down on the right side, and LeBlanc can't get there. Time called by the hitter. That's a nice way of disrupting Brandon Kelly's rhythm. Swinging strike, and he got him. That's a nice way for Brendan Kelly uh, to put him back on the bench. Third strikeout of the game for Kelly. That will bring up James Estrella, the center fielder. Now batting number two, the center fielder, James Estrella. Dylan O'Leary expecting a bunt here. Going upstairs. Didn't show any signs of bunt. Greater New Beige would like to add an insurance run. 2-0 on Estrella. Estrella 0 for 1 and walked this afternoon. There's a strike. Got that call right at the letters. Swinging strike, a beauty of a fastball. Brendan throws in the mid 80s. It features a slider and a fastball, occasional curveball. And that is a called ball. I don't know if I agree with that one. I don't, and the fans behind me don't agree in unison. Full count. And he draws the walk. I didn't like that call either. And Alex Reynolds didn't like that call because he popped up as if to th throw down a third base. That looked right in the strike zone to me. Now batting number 21, the third baseman. Noah Rivera, Rivera will step in, one for two, scored one of the two Greater New Bedford runs in the first inning. Steve Simos directing traffic out there. This is hit in the air, popped up right side above LeBlanc, and he makes the catch. Had to kind of battle the sun for that one. The sun not really up, but that one just so high up there. And a good job by LeBlanc. Two away, Tyler Arruda, who was the starting first baseman, now pitcher, stepping in. Almost killed a bird with that pop fly. Was up there for a long time. Neither pitcher is thrown over. I'm sort of surprised. There's a strike 0 1. Left handed pitcher for Greater New Bedford in the bullpen. Warming up. Upstairs 1 and 1. Upstairs, two and one. Hit in the air, foul out of play right side. And it, a couple fielders try to get there, but cannot get there in time. Two and two. If I were Jake LeBlanc, I wouldn't run the ball back so quickly. Let Brett catch his wind. Let himself catch a little wind. Counts two and two. Brendan needs his wipeout pitch now. The two Going. Two. Runner taking off from first, throw up, and it's in time. Caught stealing is Estrella. And that is the third out of the fifth inning. What a throw by Reynolds. Both teams have caught one stealing. And the Hillers getting the job done there. After five innings, it's Greater New Bedford two. The Hillers won on HCAM.
Top of the sixth inning, the Hillers coming back up to the plate. Leading off for Hopkinson. Trailing two to one. Two, Jake the LeBlanc catcher, to start things Alex off. Reynolds. Or excuse me, Alex Reynolds uh, coming up to the plate as was caught stealing new. And the Hillers top of the fifth as there's a strike. And then it was a caught stealing new and the Greater New Bedford bottom of the fifth. Nobody but nobody runs on Alex Reynolds. Wind up in the pitch, just outside. I think the approach this inning should be patience. Don't go after the junk pitch. Sit on something and crush it. Upstairs. If Alex reaches base, I'm quite sure Coach Simos will pinch run for him. I guess it would be Connor Hebert. Fouled away. Two and two. Reynolds so far today has walked and grounded out. That one low, full count. That one fought off, count remains full. Three, four, and five this inning. Alex Reynolds, Jake LeBlanc, and Dawson McMillan. Have you got a score from Taunton? Not yet, we're working on it. Uh, outside, he worked that walk. He draws Graded, the walk. Graded New Bedford fans are not happy with that call. But uh, I am, and so there's the pinch runner. And it's going to be Connor right, Hebert. Number 14, the first baseman, Jake LeBlanc. LeBlanc will step in. Alex showing his leadership skills, patting Connor on the helmet. Need base runners here. Any way you can get them. LeBlanc, a 214 batting average on the season. He needs a big hit, a really big hit. Not gonna say he's gonna hit it 390 feet. That one outside. Runner on first, no outs. Big situation here. Connor's got a very healthy lead over there. Nice secondary, almost got back pick. That one outside, Santiago checking down the line. Simos and Leone. City taking their seats in the bullpen, watching the action. Hiller's Milford softball tied one to one in the second inning. There's a strike. Two and one on LeBlanc. Runner taking off from first, the throw up is not in time. A stolen base for the Speedy Reynolds. Hebert. Hebert, Hebert came me, in for Reynolds. Runner. Right. You've never seen Alex Reynolds run that fast, I guarantee you that. <laughs> Very true. Hebert. Yeah, I had to think twice about that after I said that. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Oh yeah, pinch runner. Connor He's Hebert. more of a greyhound than Alex is a uh, Great Dane, we'll say. Certainly a uh, smart move bringing in the pinch runner. Pays off. That one outside. Full count. Tying run on second base. No outs. We get some fans behind us with their fingers crossed. Outside, LeBlanc draws the walk. Two on, no outs. Dawson McMillan to the plate. Now batting number nine, second baseman, Dawson McMillan. They got a pinch run for Jake LeBlanc. That's an excellent move. Same move that uh, he used with Alex Reynolds. Yep. So pinch runner coming in. Luke DeLoya, I believe. DeLoya, yes. 
So they got a couple of speed guys on the rail here. And Dawson McMillan, as I mentioned on every broadcast, a threat to bunt. The bunt is foul. Oh. He might just do it again. Oh, and one on McMillan. So if he gets it down, he's got two runners in scoring position, except for one now. He's up in the box. Leg lift and the pitch from Aruda inside. Backs him off the plate, one and one. Both corners charging. Saksasitsky on deck. Shortstop keeping Hebert close. Bunt up the middle, rolls up the grass, throw to second, and they do get the out at second. It will be runners on first and third. Runner, Reynolds pushed up, or Reynolds pinch runner Hebert pushed up to third. And McMillan over at first on the sacrifice. Bunt. Good hard slide by Luke DeLoya. It's one to one after two innings down in Tanton. But that was a good hard slide DeLoya put on this shortstop. No intent to injure. Wind up and the pitch. Good Low eye. on Sasitsky. Brett McIntyre on deck. Runners on the corners, one out. Fouled away, one and one. Good pitch for him, to hit on, for him to hit on. If he puts it in the air, there's nobody gonna throw out Connor Hebert for a sack fly, and that would tie the game. Now, I don't know whether Coach Simos is gonna put on that trick play. Pitcher looks over at first, and a runner taking off. And this is chopped into center field. That's going to drop. Game tying run has scored. It's two to two. An RBI single for Sasitsky. A good piece of hitting there. Hebert comes around to score. The pinch runner for Reynolds. Hiller's in business. Pushing up to second base is McMillan. Now, I don't know whether that was the trick play. But Dawson went through. Here's Anthony Farina. Well, pinch hitter pinch here. hitting for Brett McIntyre. Now batting number 10, Anthony Farina. Anthony. Well, it's a new ball game now. Anthony's a power hitter. Arena has played in 17 games. The junior is hitting a 135, 138, excuse me. He gets a hold of one. Watch out. Fouled away. Oh, and one. Got to say the Hopkins and fans are some of the quietest in the TVL. Ball in the dirt, that gets by the That one's in the, the dirt, gets by, and both runners will advance. Stopped at third is McMillan. And that is a big break for the Hillers. McMillan up to third, Sasitsky to second. Sorry to step on you there, Tom. I got a little overexcited. Created a new beige pitcher, taking a little walk on the mound there. Now Anthony's got a chance to... Drive in two runs. Trying to get his head straight there. As Farino waits the pitch. Swinging strike. As the lights start to come on here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Rockland. Well, they hear that you're a little scared of the dark, so they turn on the lights for you, Tom. That one upstairs. The lefty that was warming up for Greater New Bedford isn't in the bullpen, isn't seen anywhere by my eyes. Infielders are all playing in. That one low, that'll fill up the count. Runners on second and third, one out, a run already in, it's two to two. 
Infield playing in. They're going to go on playing for the contact play, and he walks. Bases juiced. Just as I said, the Hopkinton fans were quietest in the TBL. They make a liar out of me, Tom. Yeah, now they're getting loud. Brendan Kelly to step in. Oh, he needs a bomb here. New Bedford is playing in all the way around. Now they're going to have a little talk about this. Yeah, the infield will gather on the mound and have a chat. One out, so the runners have to freeze on a line drive. If it's two out, they'd be going on contact. I'm sure Dawson McMillan will sneak down the line as far as the third baseman will let him. Tyler Arruda struggling a little bit in this inning, and you wonder what the leash is with him. They're pretty quick to pull their starting pitcher with little to no struggle to bring in Arruda. So you wonder if they're going to have a short leash with Arruda as well if this Hiller's rally continues. I like what the Hillers are doing this inning. There's one down and the base is juiced. The umpire is flashing signals to the home plate umpire. There's a strike to Kelly. Reached back for a little extra on that pitch. Aruda did. This is hit up the left side foul. I don't know what Aruda has for breaking stuff, but it would be in his best interest to probably try and use it now. And field continuing to play in. Wind up and the pitch upstairs. One and two. Bases loaded for the Hillers, one out. Max Asitsky with an RBI single to score Alex Reynolds. Fouled away, count remains one and two. Well, now that he's seen the Uncle Charlie and picked it up real well, fouling that ball off, I think he's sitting on dead red right here. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike, he got him, two away. That ball always looks like a watermelon at the letters. Chris Burdick pinch inning for Ryan. Yep, Burdick to step in and all kinds of changes for the Hillers in this inning. Trying to switch it up to get to these Bears pitchers. Fouled away, 0-1. McMillan on third, Sasitsky on second, Farina on first. Two outs in the inning. Game now tied at two apiece. Chris, one of yesterday's heroes, along with his battery mate, Alex Reynolds. The two of them combined to keep the Falmouth Clippers at bay. Bounce fouled away, 0-2. Chris Burdick hitting a 293 on the season, has played in 21 of the 22 games, has scored 13 runs, driven in seven. Let's see what the captain can do here. And that one outside, one and two. Greater New Bedford fans did not like that call at all, but I happen to agree with the home plate umpire. One two pitch. That's low, two and two. Pitcher feels he's getting squeezed a little bit. Looks Brendan like Kelly running down the left field line and maybe stay warm. And Tommy Leone is alone out in the bullpen with nobody to talk to. Outside. Oh no, they're going to call it a strike. Second straight strikeout by Aruda. I didn't like that one. but I they, didn't like that one either. Yeah, it looked outside, but the Hillers, in any case, tie Score up the game. Half, it is 2-2 two to two two as we head to the bottom of the sixth. 
Bottom of the sixth inning, Tyler Arruda to step in. Three, four, and five for the Bears. Tyler Arruda, Andrew Matos, and Jared Madria. Brendan Kelly out there for another inning of work. It is a 2-2 ball game. The Hillers got a run last inning and nearly went on a nice rally. The run came from Zach Sisiski with an RBI single to drive in Alex Reynolds. We have a timeout here. There's actually some talk with the umpire. Do we have a couple substitutions that I did not see? Larry, we'll have to keep an eye out there. Maybe the Hillers uh, move some players around. I think they might have moved some fielders around. Well, they might have announced the pinch runners and then the re-entry, but Coach Matt Anderson is going down the bullpen to work with Tommy Leone, keep him loose just in case. Brendan starts to tire. He's got the big part of the order here coming up. You have to imagine the leash isn't too long. As this is hit in the air over to the left side and foul out of play. And that goes over towards one of the teams that'll be playing in the next game tonight. That next game will determine who will meet up with the winner of this game in the sectional finals. That one outside, one and one. Aruda 0 for 1, walked and scored a run in the first. That one outside, 2 and 1. There's a strike, two and two. Aruda didn't like it. I liked it. That's all that matters. Umpires get paid to call strikes. And that one is low, as said by the umpire. That was a close one. Could have been either way. Up the left side, loved by the shortstop. The throw to first, mm, did he get it? Yes. And that was a nice job by LeBlanc showing the ump that the ball was in his glove because the ump was taking a hard look. LeBlanc goes, look, I got it right in my glove. And they call him out, one away, Andrew Matos to the plate. Looked like there was a little snow in uh, Jake's glove. Just pinched it with his thumb and forefinger there. That's why they have those big gloves. That one is called a ball. As that is hit up the middle, great play at short, throw to first, got him. That was a great play by McKenzie, flashing the leather there. Boy, the blank looks like the first base. Brooks Robinson over there digging balls out of the dirt all afternoon. Now batting number 16. He is a sound first defensive baseman, first baseman, Jared that's for sure. Mathia. Jared Mathia steps in, DH. One for two, hits this one into left center, and that's going to drop for a base hit. Mathia held up at first. It is a two out single. Well, the score from Taunton right now for the girls' softball semifinal is three to one Milford after three innings. Wish the girls well. the catcher, Kevin Santiago. Here's the catcher. He's grounded out a pair of times today. Inside. Hillers fans getting into it. Runner leading off of first, that pitch upstairs. The 2-0 pitch in there for a strike. Gotta love the composure of Brendan Kelly. Alex throws down his fingers and he just does what he's told. Outside, three and one. Shows a lot of poise for a sophomore. Andrew Vinagre, the right fielder on deck for the Bears. Get it, get it, 
And that one got away from Reynolds, a wild pitch. Santiago will take first. I don't know if he walked or struck out. It did actually look like a decent pitch that just got by Reynolds. But in any case, it's two on with two outs. A rare pass ball on Reynolds. Andre to step in, 0 for 2 so far today. Kelly just stopped off the back of the rubber. He wasn't ready. Are they going to make an appeal here? Or no, no, we're going to have a pinch, pinch runner. runner for the Bears. So a pinch runner for the Bears over to second base. Bringing in some speed on the base paths. From the stretch, Kelly delivers in there for a strike. No and one on Vinagre. Swinging strike, 0 and 2. Beautiful bender by Kelly. Jaden soars the pinch runner. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, left side foul territory, and O'Leary will make the catch, no problem. And we will head to the top of the seventh. It is a tie game, two to two, between Hopkinton and Greater New Bedford. Top of the seventh inning, top of the order for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie to start things off, 0 for 2 with a walk. And this is the part of the order that you don't mind having up there right now if you're the Hillers. Trying to continue what you had going last inning offensively. Aruda still out there on the mound, that pitch inside, 1-0. That to deliver. Hit in the air over to left center, tracking it down into center field. And it is going to get away from the center fielder. And that is a base hit. I thought he caught that ball. I did too. But apparently, Estrella not able to make the catch. He was in the area code, but really had a run to get to it. And McKenzie now ends up on second base with a leadoff double. I was hit about 350 feet. Now what are they going to do? They're going to bring in the corners. Stevie, an excellent bunner. Simo up the first baseline. In the right field it goes. McKenzie is going to be held up at third. And that was probably the right call by the third base coach. A single for Simos. Runners on the corners, no outs. I'll be surprised if Aruda doesn't get a visit to the mound here. Well, apparently, uh, no visit yet. Alex Reynolds coming up. Now batting number two, the catcher, Alex Reynolds. Well, it looks like the, uh, now the Bears might visit. We're getting a time called. What happened here? Bach. Did you just see a Bach? Or an intentional walk. Oh, intentional think. walk. All right, there we go. That makes sense. It's the second I time today. I always forget that rule now. You, you, you don't actually have to throw the ball. Intentional walk, bases loaded, no outs. Was that the right decision? Now number 14, the we'll first find out. Baseman, Jake LeBlanc. They're going for the double play here. Jake LeBlanc to the plate, the first baseman. Well, they're going to go for contact at, right at the home plate. They can't pull a double play off here this far in. Now, if you're Coach Simos, you have a blank, just hold the bat. There's a ball, one and one. He did walk his last time up. A walk here would drive in a run. Swing strike, one and two. Got to bring his bat in as opposed to cast out that bat like a fishing rod. 
Hopefully he's got enough in his bat to get it through the infield. We'll probably score two runs at this point with Stevie Simos on second base. And he will get a piece of this one right to the shortstop and over to second base. Oh, no. And they're going to say he got there in time. I don't agree with that one. No run score on the play. This is huge for the Bears. So that ended up being, I believe, a six unassisted double play. 6 you for those scoring at home. Dawson being a good bunner, would they try a squeeze of some kind here? Two outs. Oh, it hit him, I think. Nope. They say no, and I think he would have protested if it hit him. He's Run a quiet boy. Dawson. Runners on the corners, two outs. Millen had a sacrifice bunt his last time up, but doesn't have that option here. One and one. Dawson, a good contact hitter, rarely strikes out. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, foul territory. The catcher may have a play on it. Called off by the pitcher, Aruda makes the catch. They had bases loaded, no outs, but the Bears get out of the jam. And it is two to two as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the seventh, two to two remains the score. The winner of this game trying to earn a bid to the South Division II sectional finals against the winner of the next game that'll take place here at Rockland High School between Oliver Ames and Westwood. As we have a pinch hitter for Greater New Bedford. In the leadoff spot, and he's going to rip this up the left side, and that is going to be a leadoff single. And now that'll bring up Cameron Massa, the left fielder. Pinch hitter Jacob Ferreira getting the job done. Alex Reynolds positioning his infielders. That was a line drive, certainly smoked by Ferreira. Leading it's off of first, it's a bunt up the middle, gloved by Kelly, throw to second, he got the lead runner. Great play by Kelly. A one to three, four south. Well, or one to four, excuse me. Alex Reynolds called that play. Number two, the center fielder, James Estrella. James Estrella, center fielder, stepping in. He's walked twice and grounded out. Kelly pitching a strong game and strong arms that one by Estrella, 0-1. Coach Simos told Tommy Leone not to stray too far, meaning not to go to the bullpen. I think any sign of a struggle, you're going to see a substitute. You'll see Leone in the game. One and one is the count. It's a tough spot for Tommy Leone to come in. If there's men on base, he'd love to start with a clean inning. Kelly still has the velocity, that's for sure. That one upstairs, though, two and one. Inside, three and one on Estrella. There's a strike that'll fill up the count. Full count. Matt Anderson says Tommy Leone is ready. One on, one out. Two on, one out. Estrella draws the walk. Looks like Steve Simos is going to go and get Brendan. Yeah. Kelly's pitched a great game. But I think uh, here in the seventh inning, you can't take any chances. Let's see if he takes the ball. Well, right now, it's just a chat. Hasn't taken the ball yet. 
We're getting into the power part of Greater New Bedford's batting order. He really doesn't want to take Kelly out, and I don't think he's going to right now. Looks like he's going to leave him in. Yes, he will. He'll leave him in, but. I like that decision. Brendan's game. Win, lose. Pitch a hell of a game. The third baseman, Noah Rivera. Noah Rivera to step in. Kelly still on the mound. Two on, one out. Oh, I don't know about this outfield positioning. This kid looks like he's got power. They just brought in the outfield. Strike one. Coach Simos probably had a joke for Brendan Kelly just to loosen him up a little bit. He's always known for his humor. Hit in the air over to left center. Calling everyone off is the left fielder, Sisitsky, and he makes the catch. No base runners are able to advance. A good defensive play there by Sisitsky. Got the ball in quick. Is this a Rugler up or uh, Taylor Arruda stepping in? And this is who you want, Tyler Arruda, big power hitter for the Bears. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run today. Inside, 1 and 0. Bottom of the seventh, Hillers 2, Greater New Bedford 2. Two outs. Check swing, fouled away. One and one. Runners on first and second, outside. Two and one. Brendan taking a, taking a deep breath. Slowing down his pace a little bit. Hit in the yeah, air good. over to center field, and it is caught by Ryan Wolf for the final out of the bottom of the seventh. Despite two on base, no harm done. And this game is tied, and we are heading to extra innings here in the South Division II semifinals on HCAM. Left fielder, Zach Sosicki. Zach Sosicki to lead off the eighth inning for the Hillers. And he will step in to face Arruda, who's out there for another inning of work. Fights this one off, 0-1. Zach had his head right on the ball, picked it up. Just got under it a little bit. That one low. And this is hit in the air over to Shallow center, and it's handled by the shortstop, one away. Now batting number eight, the right fielder, Brett McIntyre. Brett McIntyre steps in. Brett had a nice hit yesterday in the win over Falmouth. One and oh. Good contact hitter. Upstairs. Fouled away. Two and one.
There's a strike, two and two. Aruda got out of that bases loaded jam last inning. We'll have to take a look at that replay with Stevie Simos being erased by the shortstop. That one outside. Full count pitch. Hit in the air over to right field. Ranging over to make the catch is the right fielder, Andrew Vinagre, two away. Brendy could really help himself out by going 320. The pitcher, Brendan Kelly. Kelly to step in with two outs. The lefty awaits the pitch. Take strike one. Brendan didn't agree. Hit in the air over to left center and ranging over to make the catch is the left fielder, Cameron Massa. And we will head to the bottom of the eighth. This game is tied at two between Greater New Bedford and Hopkins. Two. Bottom of the eighth inning, a new pitcher for the Hillers. Tom Leone into the game to take over for Brendan Kelly, who pitched a gem. Seven innings for Kelly, two runs given up. Five hits, three walks, three Ks. But a nice job by Andrew Kelly. Matos. But we are tied in the bottom of the eighth, two to two. Four, five, and six for Greater New Bedford. Andrew Matos, the shortstop, steps in. This is their first look at Tommy Leone. It's nice he's got a clean inning to work with. That one low, one and oh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad bringing you Hiller's Playoff Baseball. It is South Division II sectional semifinals action here at Rockland High School at Veterans Memorial Stadium. That one's in there for a strike, one and one. Well, Tom, regardless of what happens here today, both teams have really laid it all out today. They certainly have. It's been a lot of fun. You're getting your money's worth today, that's for sure. That one low, two and one. Both teams are deserving to go to the semifinals, but only one will, or the finals, excuse me, only one will make it. Tom Leone at 328, ERA, two wins, three losses, six appearances on the mound. And delivers a ball there, three and one. And there's the walk, the leadoff walk to Matos. I wonder if they, whether they're gonna pinch run for him. Jared Mathea, the DH, will step in. Matt Anderson going out to see, visit Tommy to uh, talk to him probably about his release point. Yeah, some words of confidence. Now batting number 16, the first baseman. Stepping in, Jared, Jared Mathea. He has two RBIs, which came in the first inning, and also a pair of hits. It's two for three overall. He's been the offensive star for the Bears. The bunt fouled away. Third base coach warned the, the runner at first base that Alex could throw down. He was getting a little bit of a generous lead over there, shuffling. Runner leading off of first. And there's a bunt, foul, is it playable? No, out of the reach of O'Leary, just barely, and LeBlanc took a dive at it. This hitter now is down in a 0 and 2. Surprised uh, they had the DH bunting. 
Evan Santiago, the catcher on deck. Fouled away, count remains 0-2. Nice bender by Tommy. Had the hitter way out in front. Different approach from Leone as well. You had Kelly who was working at a rapid pace, Leone taking his time between pitches. As he should with a runner on and no outs. That one low, one and two. Tommy seems a little preoccupied with the runner at first base. Or maybe he looked over to Jake LeBlanc to tell him he was gonna throw over. Runner leading off of first. Hit in the air, right side, fair territory, but caught by McIntyre. Runner stays put at first. It's automatic for Brett McIntyre when the ball goes in the air, as well as Ryan Wolf. Kevin Santiago, the catcher, to step in. Go for two with a walk. Runner leading off of first. Check swing. It's a ball. Throw down the line. Runner nearly caught, but he's back safely. I don't know whether Alex has a signal with Jake LeBanc. Picking up some dirt, tossing it away, on simple nod. A couple times yesterday, they were almost some pickoffs. And softball, Milford leading Hopkinton at the end of five, four to one. Wind up and the pitch. Up the right side, foul. One and one. Tommy taking his time out on the mound. From the stretch, delivers. Up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman, LeBlanc, and everybody's safe. Runners on first and second with one out, a single for Santiago. That'll bring up Andrew Vinagre, the right fielder. Now batting number 19, the right fielder, Andrew Vinagre. Come on, Tommy. Vinagre, 0 for 3 so far today. Tommy has to work out of this pickle if they want to move on. Both runners leading. Leone throwing from the stretch. Fouled away. Runner is trying to initiate a balk by dancing around there between second and third. Tommy Leone paid no mind. Leg lift and the pitch. Upstairs, one and one. Corey Vieira in the on-deck circle. Jacob Ferreira pinch hit for him his last time up, but it looks like Vieira staying in the game. 
Up the middle, glove by Leone, throw to second, and they get one, throw to first, is going to be dropped. There's a runner on third. I'm not sure and why Tommy didn't get the lead runner. So there's two outs. So Vinagre reaches on a one to four fielder's choice. Lados up to third. Santiago stays put at first. Runner on first me, base, uh, right? Vinagre's at first. Santiago's thrown out. Runner on first is a meaningless runner. Number 13, the so it will be defensive interference. Boy, unless Alex feels that he didn't get a good jump, and he'll throw him out. Corey, oh, you got a feeling they're going to let him go. With LeBlanc not holding him on. Corey Vieira steps in. Runner leading off of first. Hit in the air, foul out of play, right side. Sort of a protective swing by Vieira. Hiller's one out from getting out of the inning. I just let him loose, Tom, what do you think? Yep. Leg lift and the pitch. Hit in the air, right field, and it is going to be caught by Brett McIntyre. Had to cover a lot of ground to get there, but he does. And the Hillers live to see another inning. Two to two as we will head to the top of the ninth. Gotta love that kid. Any ball that goes up, he's gonna get. Great job by McIntyre. Most right fielders would not have been able to track that one down. And McIntyre taking care of business. And we will head to the ninth on H camp. Ryan Wolf. Top of the ninth, Ryan Wolf stepping in. Great play by Brett McIntyre in right field. Allows this game to continue on. Arruda is still out on the mound. Wolf takes a strike. We'll have to watch that one on replay. It looked a little low to me. That one low. Same pitch. That's a makeup call. That catch by McIntyre sort of certainly woke the Hitler's bench up. And this is up the left side and gloved by the third baseman. Throw to first. He got him. Five to three goes Wolf, one away. Ben McKenzie to step in. Got a score of six to one in Taunton. The girls taking on Milford. And not looking good right now for the Hiller softball team. And is popped up right side, foul territory, ranging over to make the catch is Aruda. Two away. Steve Simos to step in. Might be his time to hit a rocket over the wall. He's got very good power. Nice compact swing. Coming into this game, Simos was hitting a 340 on the season. 11 runs scored, 13 driven in. 14 hit by pitches. His on base percentage must be high. And this is popped up, a high fly ball left side, and no one's gonna get to it, it wasn't foul territory. He's out in the Bermuda Triangle, no man's land. No Rivera, the third baseman, had the best shot at it. At it. Shortstop, we're in a long way for that, but once you get into the triangle situation there, chances are the ball's gonna drop. 0-1. Oh Steve 
Simos gets a piece of this one over to center field. And that is going to drop towards that deep, deep fence. Around first, over to second, heading to third. The throw in cut off. It's a triple for Steven Simos. Oh, I wish he pulled that ball. That would have been out. But that's the deepest part of this outfield, 403 feet. And that is not easy to hit over, but he almost had it. Any other TVL oh, yeah, field, two, or any TVL right. field, Alex that would have been out of. So now a runner on third, two outs, and you got Alex Reynolds at the plate. And they're gonna give him another pass, intentional. They know better. Looks like Zach Sasitsky is in the uh, bullpen warming up. Jake LeBlanc will step in. LeBlanc 0 for 3 and a walk. Certainly due for a hit. We'll take strike one. On deck is Dawson McMillan, shallow blank reach. Swinging strike, 0-2. Got him with the breaking pitch. LeBlanc gonna take a walk around home plate, collect himself. He realizes he's in an 0-2 hole right now. A lot of real estate to work with for Jake. He just put it there, an empty spot. Runner takes off from first. That pitch called a ball, one and two. Stolen base for Reynolds. I'd call it defensive indifference because he didn't go over and cover it, but you you got the book today. You can call it whatever you want. That leaves first base open. Now one outside, two and two. Two on, two outs. Steve Simos crushed a triple to center field. And this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, and they get him. Six to three goes LeBlanc. And it will remain two to two, heading to the bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth inning, nine one and two for Greater New Bedford. And does it get any better than postseason time? Yesterday got to witness a great extra inning Hillers softball game in which the Hillers walked off in the 10th and now we're into the bottom of the ninth here. Cameron Massa waits the pitch, swinging strike. Got a good hack at that one. 0-1 on Massa. Massa 0 for 3 today, reached on a fielder's choices last time up in the 7th. Swing strike, lazing it by him, 0-2. He's got to use his secondary pitches if he wants to be effective. Shake. All high school kids are pretty good at hitting the fastball. And there's strike three. Nice three pitches, bender. three strikes, one out. It was the off speed. James Estrella stepping in, the center fielder. He's walked three times in this game. He's 0 for 1 with three walks. Was caught stealing in the fifth. Gets a piece of this one up the left side. Glove that short. Throw to first is high. Gets away. And Estrella's going to keep going over to second base. I think you have to intentionally pass now. This kid looks like a football player. So Estrella at second, reaches on the single initially, and then the second on the error. I think Coach Simos just gave the four-fingered salute to Alex. Well, Rivera stepping in. He's one for four today, singled and scored a run in the first. Does he have to step on the rubber before he gives the pass? Yes, he does. And they will indeed give him the intentional walk. Now will bring up Taylor Aruda, the pitcher, who can try to 
Grab the win. That run on first base is absolutely meaningless. Uh, one out, two on. Now batting number 26, the pitcher, Tyler Arruda. Leone from the stretch. That one's low. Rather be there than belt high. Not quite playing at double play depth. I think the infielders would be in a little bit more. They're playing back. Upstairs, 2-0. Tommy's going to pitch when he's ready, not when the New Bedford team wants him to pitch. He's looking over his outfield. Leone deals, fouled away, 2-1. Thought he would have taken a strike, but no. Westwood and Oliver Ames watching the conclusion of this one, waiting for their game. They're up next. Fouled away, two and two. Tommy's working hard. Got the count even now. I think he's got to continue with his fastball. He can't afford to put one in the dirt. Milford has defeated Hopkinton softball. Six to three is the final. He made a little noise in that last inning. Tommy Leone stepped off the back of the rubber. Congratulations to Hiller Softball, though, on another great season. They certainly played very well all season long. And a lot of their great players will be back next year. Leone set to deal the leg lift and the pitch. Fouled away. Good battle here. Two and two remains the count. Man on second is playing with Tommy's head. He's jumping around out there. Even while Tommy's looking at him to hopefully induce a balk and grab a base. Andrew Maddow stew up next. Nobody checking the runner in the middle. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air over to right field and that is going to drop in. Lead runner is going to try to score the game winning run and he will. Greater New Bedford will advance as they walk off with the three to two victory. They won an appeal. They think the runner missed third base. Reynolds and, is and pointing. You know, the, the third base coach was telling the runner to stop. The third base coach told the runner to stop and I couldn't think of why. And then that briefly crossed my mind. Final score, greater the umpires three, don't look like they're gonna two. talk this over. I don't think we're going to get a change here. I think Greater New Bedford's going to get the win, but they are discussing something. Oh, well, no, they're shaking hands. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. I think we should pause the camera and uh, show the umpire. <laughs> You'll have to wait till you go into the editing room. Yeah, I guess so. Well, a uh, great season by the Hillers but it'll come to an end here this evening at Rockland High School as they fall three to two to Greater New Bedford. The game winning RBI single by the winning pitcher, Tyler Arruda, drives in James Estrella. And the Hillers fans still giving an applause because Hopkinton certainly deserved it. What a season this baseball team had, Larry. Absolutely. I love every one of these kids. I mentioned that in our very first broadcast, and they provided me with a lot of joy this spring. And they're a pretty tough bunch, and I hope 
each and every senior after they get back from college, picks up the cleats again and heads down to play Legion ball well, next it, spring. Absolutely, and we look forward to seeing some of these guys back at Legion Ball this summer with Ashland Legion. There'll be a handful of these guys on the Ashland Legion squad, I'm hoping. Can't wait to see the roster. The Hillers score two runs on seven hits, commit one error. Greater New Bedford scores three runs on seven hits and commits no errors, and they get the victory. Congratulations to Greater New Bedford. That's a good baseball team there. And they will advance to the sectional championship against the winner of Oliver Ames and Westwood. But the Hillers, they should not hang their heads. They really had a great season. And this was a very memorable run. Of course, it comes to a tough end. But congratulations to Coach Simos and every player on the Hopkinton Hillers baseball team on a great run. And we certainly look forward to next season. There will be a handful of great talent coming back. Well, that is going to wrap it up for the 2017 Spring Hopkinton Hillers baseball season. For my broadcast partner, all season long, Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this presentation of HCAM Sports. The final score for the final time, Greater New Bedford defeats the Hopkinton Hillers 3-2 in the sectional semifinals. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.